SpaceX clears out the Starbase launch site, heavily upgraded Starlink satellites take flight, and Dragon takes humans to its heavenly nest. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. After being transported off and away from the pad last week and down to the shipyard, S-25 reached its final destination, for now at least, at Massey's test site over the weekend. Elon did tell RGV Aerial Photography back in January that the former gun range is being turned into a rocket test facility. So it looks like Starship 25 will be its first non-tank prototype stress test victim. On Monday, Starship 26 conducted its second cryo test, then a day later was also moved from its pad and up to the shipyard, where it has since been moved to the high bay with S-27. Booster 7 now rests alone at the orbital launch site, as it awaits FAA approval for the first orbital launch attempt, expected later this month. In the meantime, smaller to-do items are being checked off SpaceX's list with things like Stage Zero. But Elon also tweeted his company is hard at work further improving Raptor as well. The engine is now reliable on the test stand under most conditions. Now we're working on dynamically adapting the start sequence based on increasingly difficult propellant inlet pressures and temperatures. Operating with low pressure, warm liquid oxygen is particularly important. On Monday, SpaceX launched their first flock of 21 Starlink version 2 mini satellites from Slick 40 Florida, sharing details about them on Twitter. They're called V2 minis because while larger than the previous 1.5 versions, they are made to be Falcon fairing compatible, so still smaller than the future Starship compatible Gen 2 Starlink sets. Don't let the mini name fool you though. The V2 minis are bigger than our previous satellites, and more importantly, they include more advanced phased array antennas and the use of E-band for backhaul, which will enable Starlink to provide about four times more capacity per satellite than earlier iterations. Among other enhancements, V2 minis are equipped with new Argon Hall thrusters for on-orbit maneuvering. These have 2.4 times the thrust of our first generation system, and it will be the first time ever that Argon Hall thrusters are operated in space. Elon shared unique onboard footage of the birds being flung away from the second stage, deploying without issue, and the first stage landed for its third time on a shortfall of Gravitas station in the Atlantic Ocean, marking the 100th consecutive landing of a Falcon booster. Then after a last minute scrub on Monday due to a technical issue with the ignition system, the Crew-6 crew made a second attempt lifting off from the planet aboard their previously thrice flown Endeavour capsule on Thursday morning. This time it was a great success, the Falcon rocket hoisting two Merkin, a Russian, and a UAE astronaut to orbit on their way to the International Space Station, which they rendezvoused with and docked at a day later. Their zero-g indicator for this mission? An alien stuffed in an EVA suit named Suhail, Arabic for the star Canopus. The brand spanking new first-stage booster for this mission, by the way, made a touchdown on Just Read the Instructions shortly after liftoff. Attempting to land on our drone ship, Just Read the Instructions. And lastly, after several delays due to conflict with the crewed mission, Starlink 27 is scheduled to lift off in just a few hours. I'll be streaming this one live exclusively on Rumble, so join us using the link below. Short and sweet, that's all for today. Thanks for stopping by. And thank you, Locals members, for keeping these episodes funded. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.